Blog Talk Radio. Hi, all y'all. This is the girl George and the Dragon's Radio Show. And today, for you, we've got a girl that is continuing the love ins at L.A. In L.A. at the Griffins Park Merry Go Round. Back in the day, uh, Michael Dare started a joke in uh, L.A. Weekly in 1985, and it said that there was going to be love-ins at the park. And I had just come from San Francisco, so I believed him. I called all my friends, and we came out there. And at the, at the merry round they said, oh, that was a joke in, in the L.A. Weekly. So we said, well, we don't care. So we just started playing, and everybody else that didn't know it was a joke came and joined in. There was a couple hundred of us. So we decided to do it every year. So every year I put out about a 1,000 flyers, and every year we'd do it again for 10 years from 85 to 95, and then I came back to San Francisco. So it stopped, and then all of a sudden, a couple of years ago, they started happening again. And believe it or not, the girl that started up is named George, too. Her name is Georgiana. Hi, Georgia. How are you? Hi, George. How are you doing? How did you get into doing this love-in thing? Well, I just... Actually, all this social networking and Facebook and people were saying, oh, remember the love-ins, remember the be-ins, and this and that. And I thought, well, why did it ever have to end? So we just started doing it again. So when, what year did you start back again? Ah, uh, what year did I start? 2011, I think it was. So it's been going like five years now. That's great. Yeah, That's and every great. year it, it more and more people hear about it, and even if it's just a small gathering, it's uh, it works. Yeah, there's a lot of love there. That's what counts. Yeah, yeah. And and your your old man is is from the band Love, right? Johnny Echo. Yes, he is. Yes, and he comes out and plays at the Love Inn too, right? Oh, everybody just you know brings guitars or drums or whatever and plays what they. Please. Yeah, there ain't no stages or, or badges or nothing. You just bring some food and bring the kids and the dogs and some instruments and sit around and jam. That's the way we did it. <laughs> yeah, medicine. <laughs> so so uh, the guy that, that started it all as a joke is going to be on the show next week. His, his name is uh, Michael uh, Beer. So call in next week and we'll, we'll give him a bad time. Yes, we all so, have to get back to the garden, don't we? <laughs> So so we used to do it first Sunday of April because that's when it started, but you do it like on the anniversary of Woodstock, right? And um, It's not because it was the anniversary of Woodstock. It's because of the weather. I know that it will be but a it nice... But it ends up being the anniversary of Woodstock, right? That way people Somehow it. the weather good. is perfect for it there, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Cause in so April, we can stay till the park closes out, at know. about 10 p.m. and it's all right, yeah. Yeah, or, or or we'd end up on Easter, or, or you know, it'd end up on April Fool's Day. Yeah, but Day you and tend to get it, it gets cold at night here. You know, the marine layer yeah. comes in, it gets foggy, so you don't mind up there in San Francisco, but we like to stay barefoot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're a, you're an LI. You're an L. Where, where are you from originally? London. I was born in London. London. Yeah. Wow. And my parents were in show business, so we came out here to, for work in the early What'd 50s. What they do? What they do? Actors, and my dad was a UPM at NBC in New York, and uh, just uh, you know, stage screen. So how did so you get I was into brought modeling? up in that world. How did you get into modeling? Um, just I fit the bill, and my godmother was. Uh, Worked for a what was it Jansen swimsuits or something, and uh, she introduced me to a friend of hers who was an agent, uh, Fran O'Brien, and we uh, took it from there. And so I was about thirteen, fourteen, and uh, modeling and not going to school very much. So I went to Hollywood Professional <laughs> School. You only had to go four hours a day. And then from the modeling, you meet musicians and actors, and it just all snowballed from one thing to another. It's all in my book. So Yeah, I, re- I read in your book that you traveled with the Beatles when they were young. Yeah, when I mean, we were all young. Yeah, um, yeah, I know. 
went to see them in Vegas before they did the Hollywood Bowl here, my mother and two girls I knew at school. And I was sitting around the pool and talking to this English girl, and she turned out to be an assistant, I think, to Neil Aspinall. And she invited me up to the room, and he said, are you going to the show? And I said, I had a ticket. And he said, well, here's a, you know, you can come with us kind of thing. So I went to the show and watched it all from uh, the stage. It was just a riser at the convention center there. And uh, watched the show, couldn't hear it very well, but watched it from the floor alongside them and then went to a party we were all staying at the sahara hotel and mind you i was 14 but i was a black cocktail dress long black gloves stiletto heels <laughs> beehive hairdo false eyelashes because i was a model <laughs> and uh You're although hot. they knew i wasn't 18 um my mother phoned up the room and said you know we're going back to la tomorrow and someone said oh we're going back to la we can give her a ride and my mother being very hip said Okay. And they didn't know that it was via Portland and Vancouver, so violations of man acts and everything else. But it was all very innocent. I just went along and came back to L.A. about four days later, and my dad wasn't too pleased. So you rode in the same cars with the Beatles? Yeah, and the and the, the coaches and the plane. And, and wow. uh, they were giving me a ride back to L.A. from Vegas, but it was via a couple So who did gigs. you like best of them? Who, which one of the Oh, I liked you? Paul best, but uh, he was always off with uh, Jackie DeShannon or somebody. So uh, <laughs> got a hickey off George, and that was about it. <laughs> Pisces again. There you go with your Pisces. <laughs> yeah, who knew? Who knew? So, so how did you end up with Keith Moon? Later on, you end up being Keith Moon's girlfriend for a while. Okay, that from that from that Beatles thing, um, of course, Derek Taylor was on tour, and, and uh, when Monterey Pop started, I had just left high school, and I went up there and I said, "Hey, Derek, it's me from you know a couple of years ago." And he let me work for him. Work for him. I was a gopher, you know, just uh, helping out in the press <laughs> tent and stuff. And of course, gathering the who together for their uh, various press releases and things. And I got to know the guys fairly well. And then I was in London in 1969 at a club called the Revolution in Mayfair. And uh, just as I was leaving because I was going to Ibiza the next day, Mooney came up and said, where are you going? You know, I said, Ibiza. He said, why? I said, for the sun. He said, I have a sun on my wall. And he and Kim had just broken up. And um, he had a little flat in Jubilee Place with a big sun on the wall. But I went to Ibiza and I came back and I'd see him around town. And we started hanging and that's all she wrote. I moved into Bywater Street for a while and uh, then at Tara House, and um, when Ramport was open, Keith told Wiggy to give me a job, and so he did, and I ran the front office and ended up co-producing a few albums with one of the other bands that came in after we finished Quadrophenia. So it all just, right. you know, it, it it's like everything connects up. Because well, I knew that this was person. the way it was back then, was it kind of go with the flow and you just end up with it. Yeah, <laughs> and you know, I still do that. Me too. 64 years old and <laughs> proud of it because I made it. Well, oh, I'm 70 <laughs> and I still do it. <laughs> I know. We just, my mother was 94 and flew over here for a party in 2005, yeah. and she was tired and she choked and she had a DNR, so party hors d'oeuvres are not safe. <laughs> She died at a party? No, she came over here to go to a party, and um, she was, you know, some people were visiting, and, and she choked, and she choked, and that was But that. she was okay afterwards, right? No, she died. Oh, oh okay. So. <laughs> but, you know, she was oh, 94. Oh, well, 95, that's not, that's not a bad thing. And she, the that's last funny. thing I remember her saying was, I am so effing happy, and that was yeah, mom. So, well, that's know? good. She lived a full life, and that's what you're supposed to do. Yeah, you live so, but she just wouldn't grow up either. She say, see you later, suckers. <laughs> yeah, she wouldn't grow up either, and and I, I see myself sort of becoming mum at, at her, the age that I am now, the age that she was then, you know, so I don't know. 
Okay, you ended up married to one of Chad and Jeremy. Was it Chad? And Jeremy? No, no, uh, Gordon Waller, oh. Peter and Gordon. Oh, Gordon and, and what's, what was the name of the group? Peter and Gordon. Peter and Gordon. What, did they, what songs did they do? World Without Love, Woman, yeah, yeah, yeah. I Go to Pieces, you know, all those songs. Okay, uh, how did you married to him? Yes, I did. He was my very first back when I was 16. And um, 33 years later, he had to marry me. (laughs) So, yeah, strange turns. Again, that happened from the modeling, and I worked uh, a Carol and Charles fashion show at all the Broadway stores to a band called The Bees. And Uh The Bees uh, were John York and this guy... uh, Caldwell, yeah, I forgot his first name. And he, his wife was one of the Gazari dancers, Mimi from the Hollywood of Go Go things. And I went and started uh, rehearsing with them because I had got a job at the whiskey dancing. But I was fifteen, and Mario knew this, so when he came back to town, he told Elmer off for hiring me. And then I went and and watched uh, for the Gazari rehearsals and. Next thing I knew, Dick Clark uh, started a show called Where the Action Is, and I was an alternate dancer on that. And um, one of you know, some they needed someone else because I was underage, but you know, I was sixteen, and <laughs> I met Gordon. I met Gordon there, and uh, on this, one of the shows. Uh, so that one goes. And then I'm still friends did with you John ever, York. He's, did you ever? Did you ever play an instrument or, or sing for real? Uh, in school, I played the oboe and the clarinet, and I knew how to, you know, play a few songs on but the you guitar. you don't do it on stage? You don't do it on no, stage? No, no, no. No, it was all school stuff. I like music, but you I don't should. consider my I don't consider myself, you know, creative enough for that. But, right. uh, Just pick up a guitar and learn a couple of chords. That's all you need. Oh, I know. I or know a tambourine. How to do that. Or, 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 or my nails or are too long, or, or my the wrist that I broke three times. It hurts to to keep play. I could probably play pedal steel. Yeah, yeah or, or a slide yeah. guitar. Yeah, slide guitar, lap steel. Because mm-hmm. I can't turn somebody, my arm somebody, somebody I have arthritis. Me a lap really. I have arthritis quite badly. I'm I'm getting replaced parts all the time. I have two hips, <laughs> a knee. <laughs> Lord, just keep. <laughs> Keep putting me back together. But I rode my so horse now three months. Out. I rode my horse woman? three months after getting my second hip. So. Sure. So you're now the bionic woman. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Just uh, something wears out these this day and age. Wonderful modern medicine. We can get stuff fixed. Yeah. You know, steampunk. You're half machine and half half whatever. Yeah. Well, see, I. I was uh, doing, you know, films, some extra work, whatever, and I got into stunts, and uh, I was much too old. I looked young, but I I was doing stunts for these, for like Goldie Hawn and stuff, and um, I just screwed myself up, (laughs) (laughs) jumping off buildings and things. Oh, my goodness. So what are you doing now? What are you doing now? What am I doing now? What's the name Pardon? of your book? Let's plug your book. What about your book? What's okay, your book? In My Life So Far. It's on Amazon. It's on Lulu. It's on Barnes & Noble. <clears throat> Just type in my name, Georgiana Steele Waller. And there's, it ended in 2007, and so much stuff happened subsequently that I'm toying with writing a little more of it, maybe adding to it rather than writing an entire other tome. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, life just Part keeps two. happening. New stuff keeps <laughs> coming into my life, and it's wonderful. I found love at 60 <laughs> after a turbulent wow. marriage. How, mm-hmm. long so, How long have you been uh, together? How long have you been together? We've known each other since 1965. We wow. probably didn't see each other from 1967 to about 2010. I don't know. Johnny found me on Facebook. I'm not on Facebook, on MySpace. And I said, you remember me? 
And I went to see a show, and he, he came in from Arizona, and uh, it was like we'd never been apart. So it's wonderful. That's great. That's amazing. Yeah. And I love the story on, on Facebook or MySpace. I used to be on MySpace. I found all of my old friends on on, on Facebook. That's how I booked yeah. the show. That's how Same here. People, people I, I just, just talked to old friends, you know, because it's over the phone. And I talked to old friends I haven't seen in 50 years. <laughs> yeah. Uh, 50 years, you think he'd be saying that. It's so weird. But, yeah, 50 years. <laughs> it's awesome. It's awesome. I love it. Love it, love it, love it. Yeah. They, they so the are you going to us. come down to one of our lovings? Oh, I don't come down. Well, I'll be coming down for a movie. See, they're making a movie about the downtown art district in L.A. That yeah. happened, like, in the 80s and yeah, 90s. Yeah, that's in Chinatown, in yeah. It was at Al's Bar in L.A., downtown L.A., and yeah. uh, it was like, you know, punks and, and, and artists and poets and lofts and all that stuff. Well, they're making a movie about that right now called uh, Tales of the American, because the, the hotel above the Al's Bar was called the American Hotel. So, oh, cool. So they came, they came to uh, Berkeley this week with a, a, a camera, and they interviewed me for like a couple hours. And then they, well, they filmed me on, on stage, and I, I gave them a DVD of all the footage I have of Al's Bar, which I have a lot, you know, Al's Bar, because that was my favorite place for years. So uh-huh. that movie will be, be premiering in Hollywood, so I'll let you know when it comes, and you come down yeah. and come to the premiere as my and guest. will be there with yes. bells on. And you dress up, and we'll, we'll walk up the red carpet. <laughs> Oh yeah, I can do that. Got got all the awesome, 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 awesome. Got the wardrobe. <laughs> you should you should make a movie about your book. Um, it could be. I can't make a movie, but somebody could. Well, get somebody else. It to would do it. it would it would need a largest budget because it takes place all over the world. Oh lord! <laughs> you know, we'd have to do London, New York, uh, Ibiza. L.A., you know, it would have to uh, have a, a slightly larger budget. So if we find a producer, it'd be great. <laughs> so is Johnny still playing around, Johnny Echo? Oh, yeah. He just uh, sold out down in uh, the Tiki Oasis Fest in San Diego. And uh, the week before that at the trip in Santa Monica. <clears throat> and What's the name of the band he's playing with? Love Revisited. Oh, it's still Love. Okay. Yes, love uh, because the uh, Baby Lemonade were the backing band for Arthur and he when they went back out on the road because there was no Kenny or Brian or anything, and uh, they played for twelve years with Arthur and so they are in in fact love. It sounds and just Arthur's like the old band now, and right? everything, and yeah, there's there's going to be something at the satellite here in Echo Park, and uh, again at the Casbah in San Diego. So more gigs so should be. So you go to all for, of his gigs, right? You go to all of. Oh yeah, gigs. someone's got to carry the guitar. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I still rock. I still rock. Since I got my new knee, I can dance again. So. <laughs> <laughs> where where do you live in Laurel Canyon, Hollywood, LA? What, no, I live in a canyon, but it's up in the Glendale area. Oh, I used to live around Glendale, sort of, sort of. Yeah, the, the Glendale the Burbank side, around the old, uh, you know, up in the hills, but not oh, over that's, that's nice. around the two. And uh, where the old Palomino used to be, remember the Palomino? Oh, the Palomino Way, North Victory, that's way up. No, Glendale is, is next to Burbank. We're only a couple miles from Hollywood. And so uh, it works. Yeah, I know where next Glendale to Pas- is. Between Pasadena and Burbank, that's where we are. I know where Glendale is. I, I, I lived off of Vermont and Sunset around there. Right where that yeah, riot I'm came further up. up in the hills. It came, it came up within a half a block of my house, and they were birding. Yeah, that was the Los Feliz area. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, that's that's where we'll go up to the canyon. <laughs> we know the someone who bought Jim Morrison's house, and <laughs> we know someone who bought Jim Morrison's house, so we still go hang out in the canyon sometimes. <laughs> oh, cool. Oh, cool. Do you know Carlos Guitarlos? 
No, I don't think so. He's an L.A. guitar player. He used to play with the Rhythm Pigs. I don't know if you know them. Punk no, I know a Carlos who played with the Birds uh, when they, you know, it became Gene and Mike and, and uh, Carlos and <laughs> John York and Rick Danko. That Birds. That was a different... In 1989. So how long have you been in L.A.? Ah, came out here in 1954... And I went back to England in 1969, and I came back here, well, visited it in 75 and most of 70, uh, 76, 77. But uh, I moved back here in 81. And, uh, so do you like here England was, better or here? You like here? And uh, here. I, yeah. There's certain things I like in England about, but, you know, the people are all gone now, and the clubs have changed. And yeah. Yeah. Now that Mum's dead, I, I don't have I my went room to, there anymore. You know, <laughs> I went to London in about 1974, and I met Chrissy Hine. That's before she was famous. I bought I a punk there. outfit from her. I was there from that, in that store, Sex. You know that store, Sex that Chrissy Hine worked at, and McLaren or the guy that managed the the sex business. He owned this punk oh, store. I don't. I, 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 store. I didn't. I didn't involve myself with punk. Oh, 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 I'm a punk. <laughs> ah. I found no, I didn't involve in solo. Man, I started way back in the beatnik days, and then I went through for the folk era and through the for the hippie era, but I really found my home in punk because I'm very loud. I'm very loud. Well, they had the whole British invasion there. thing instead, and so British uh-huh. invasion... Peter and Gordon, the Beatles, you know. All yeah, that. that's a lot more gentle. My thing is yelling and screaming. Tell you, I just rented again uh, Blow Up, because I'm going to look at some uh, of my old friends. <laughs> so that was the <laughs> London crowd, and then and all the hippie thing here, you know. And Laura well, Kenya. Keith Moon would have fit right in with the punk crowd. <laughs> yeah, well, the punk... The, he could have invented it. Could, yeah, in fact, he did. I mean, uh, Pete loved the punk movement. He yeah. thought it was very much like the early Who movement, you know. Yeah, yeah, so. it was very violent, very out there, very, yeah. It was whole life. Smash your head against the wall kind of thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 yeah that's, that's my thing is, is right out in front. No, I will see my playlist today so far has been... Uh, Let's see, Electric Ladyland, and then the first Elton John, and then I just put oh, on Gift from a Flower Hendrix? to a Garden. <laughs> did you ever meet Hendrix? Did you ever meet Hendrix? Oh, yeah. Yes. You yes. did? Tell yes. me about him. Jimmy um, was around London, you know. He was uh, there, and then after, as a matter of fact, I went to see... What was it? We went to the I uh, went to the Isle of Wight with you, and uh, Jimmy played there, and he came back. We were at a party at Chris and Jeanette Woods. Remember Chris Wood, the flute player from Traffic? Yeah. And uh, Jimmy was over there, and then he he left with his German girlfriend because he had some business to attend to the next day, and he never woke up. So that was it, huh? Well, that was it. Check out time. Yep. Oh well, he so, did a lot in the days he had, so it's it's not. And then Johnny, of course, knew good. him when he was still Jimmy James and not anything special. Did played he the play California? With him? Yeah, played the did California he? Club here. They were all friends when as teenagers, you know. So. That's cool. Yeah. Did you ever meet? If you look Janice? at my Facebook page. Janice? I think there's a picture of Johnny and Leon Hendricks at someone's house last year. So. Did you ever meet Janice? Yes. I was at Monterey. Yeah. I met everybody. Cool. Did you talk? I to was and, and working, working at the press tent. I met everybody, and then saw some people over the years, down through the years. Found them again on Facebook. Some have found me. <laughs> what and, about Jim uh, Morrison? Did you run into him? Oh yeah. Well, he was. He used to hang with Johnny. So oh, cool. They were. I. I didn't care for Jim. I didn't like him. Sagittarius. Not only that, he was just, he'd go out of his way to, you know, be 
unlikable. I'm not... And it's, he was at a friend's house after the whiskey one night, and she got this all new white shag carpet, whatever, and she said, oh, here, Jim, here's an ashtray, because he was smoking. And he just took a puff, threw the ashtray in the new carpet, and stomped it. You know, he did stuff like that. But you got to remember, he was also just a little kid. You know, he was young. And he was very, very stoned all the time. Yeah, he was a drunk, and he was bipolar. And uh, and he was on acid all the time, and speed, and uppers, and downers. And oh, yeah, Johnny can tell you some stories. That, to ask him one day to tell you about their trip to the circus. <laughs> Oh, on acid. <laughs> on acid. you got to get Johnny Jim, to do my show. I want to talk to Johnny on the show, too. I've been trying to get him on the show. Well, he he doesn't get... like to talk much. <laughs> no, he does. He talks. He's hiding right so now. Tell him he to be on my room. show. He was in the room. We'll, we'll talk about, about all the the old drug addicts we do. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Those that are still... There aren't any that are still alive. A couple... Some are still alive, but some aren't. <laughs> yeah, and some shouldn't be. <laughs> all of, yeah, some shouldn't be, and some of them. Well, yeah, I, we all have our legal cards now, so I just yeah. yeah. Grow well, our well, plant. mostly everybody I know nowadays. Well, mostly most of the time, all the way through, were potheads. I mean, I uh, mean, my I mother know smoked pot heads, until the week they she died. My mother smoked pot right up to 94. I turned her on in the 60s, and she always <laughs> said it was too good for the young people. <laughs> <laughs> and then at the Love-In, I took some shrooms and uh, rode the <laughs> merry-go-round. So first time in about 47 years or something, but it no, was I don't pleasant. think I do any shrooms. I think... I think I, I think a, a, they were a from the hate as well. Is about all I could handle at my age. <laughs> they were from the hate, and wow. they're just very nice. You just take a little nibble once in a while and get a little. <laughs> Everything gets bright and shiny. You know. <laughs> I remember those days. Partner Star had a friend that used to send us care packages from San Francisco and Nashville, and they'd send us psilocybin and all this. All yeah, well, that's what mushrooms all are. Yeah. <laughs> My goodness. So the whole oh. Nashville thing for three years was kind of a, 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 a twilighty blur. Yeah, well, Johnny just ran through with a guitar. I don't know what he's doing. <laughs> he's building a guitar. Did you spend any time in San Francisco? Oh, yeah, I lived up there for a little while. I lived up in Big Sur after Monterey, and then I got crazy for the city, so I kept going up to San Francisco and hung around in the hay okay. and various other places. Up so we can, find you, we can find you on Facebook, right? What's your name? George, say your Georgiana name. Georgiana Steele hyphen Waller. Okay, I'd like to thank you for being on our show. It's been... It's, well, it's finally great to be talking to you, George. And, uh, it's been what is your groovy. What's your name that you, you're you called George from? Are you Georgina Girl or Georgette? George Rocker. No, but I mean, what was your... G-I-R-L-G-E-O, and the second name is No, Rocker. your original think, name. What is your birth name? I don't name? have a real name. That's it. That's okay. the name I've got. I, I okay. gave up the other one many, 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 many years ago. This is Girl George. I just George. keep adding to mine. <laughs> And the Dragons Radio Show. Saying, see you later, alligator. Okay, girl. We'll see you when you come out. We'll go to the movies. Bye.